Now let's combine everything we've learned so far to learn how to appropriately graph a polynomial function. So I've developed a strategy for you that you can pay attention or you could use to help you do that. And then we'll look at an example of how it plays out. First thing we want to do is we want to look for the end behavior of a particular function. So this function right here, what do we know about its end behavior? Highest index is even and that it's a positive coefficient. So that tells me then that I have some roughly graph that has in behavior such as that. Second thing we want to look at is we want to look at its x-intercepts. Try to get an idea where f of x equals zero. So in order to do that, we need to solve that for zero. So we have x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 1, set it equal to zero. Where are the x's that make that true? This factors into, it's, a perfect, it's an odd perfect square. So x minus 2, or x squared minus 1, times x squared minus 1. For that to be true, well, I guess I can still factor this one. Um, this becomes x plus 1. This becomes x minus 1. That's x plus 1. And that's x minus 1. For this to be true, any one of these products has to equal 0. So x plus 1, if that's true, x would equal negative 1. And that second factor, for that to be true, x equals 1. And the third factor, if that were 0, that would be true if x equals negative 1. And the last one, x equals 1. So I have two or four solutions, depending on the language we want to use. Really have four solutions. But two of those solutions are of multiplicity two. How does that help us with our graph now? Well, that tells us we have a graph that crosses. Let me put some tick marks on it. It has a graph that touches at these points. It doesn't cross because both of those are a multiplicity of an even amount. So I have some graph now that I can build this part of the graph. That's what step two will allow us to do now. Step three, let's find out where it crosses the y-intercept at. How do we determine that? Well, we evaluate the function at zero. Why at zero? Because that's the value of x on the y-axis is at zero. And so our function then becomes zero to the fourth minus two times zero squared Minus 1. That was supposed to be a minus 1? Yeah, back up. I was doing some work. That's a plus 1. I know I caught myself. I was working ahead. I had a mistake. Plus 1. Back her up. It was a plus 1. I knew on this particular graph that that had to be a plus 1 because I knew that my value at 0 was a 1. And it also shows me it has to be 1 or it has to be a positive number because my graph is above the x-axis. So f of 0, where x is 0, my graph crosses right here at 1. So then that helps me connect. And I know that it crosses at that point And it has to touch both sides. So I can smoothly start to allow those graphs to connect. Step 4, if helpful, is to see if there's any symmetry. And it does look like my graph is symmetrical about the y-axis. So how do we determine that? Well, remember if we inserted the value of f of negative x, or evaluated my, evaluated my function at negative x. Let me try to separate out my steps here. That would become negative x to the fourth minus 2 times negative x squared plus 1. Uh, that's x to the fourth. That's minus 2x squared plus 1. I look at this result and compare it with my original function. They're identical. So what that tells me then is that I do have symmet or symmetry about the y-axis, which is a verification. And lastly, we want to look at its turning points. Turning points are identified by the index 
or my highest leading index, which is a fourth. So this is a fourth degree polynomial, which tells me, let me put that down, fourth degree polynomial tells me at most there are going to be n minus one turning points. So in this case, that's a four minus one equals a three. So at most, I can expect three turning points. And that's what I have. I have a turning point here, turning point here, and a turning point there. So that was my strategy to solve a polynomial function. Well, not solve it, but to graph a polynomial function. There was three steps, or yeah, there's five steps that I did here. One, I wanted to look at its end behavior, which is determined by this whole first term. So that was step one. Step two was look for my x-intercepts. Step three, look for my y-intercepts. Step four, check for symmetry. Step five, look for its turning points. And some of these are there as proof that my graph is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So it's kind of a, a check for me. But that's what I'm going to do every time I'm going to try to graph a polynomial function.